So your top story, it is the final day before the New Hampshire primary. Candidates making their last-ditch efforts in the state in what could be the last stand for a few. Joining us now is former New Hampshire governor and White House chief of staff, John Sununu. Governor, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. How are you today? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Thank good. you. Uh, do you think New Hampshire is going to represent a change in what we've been seeing based on polls in this election? Well, I think the, the kind of change you might expect, and there's still, a, believe it or not, there's still a lot of fluidity. I spoke to a lot of folks yesterday who are still trying to make up their mind. Uh, I think you're going to probably will see a continued erosion uh, in the Trump vote. Uh, if he doesn't win by, by a dozen points or more, I think people will say he's, he's getting a continuation of, of the losses that he started to see in Iowa. I think you're going to see a clustering around second place. I think the Rubio Jeb Bush and, and, and perhaps John Kasich will cluster around second place. Then comes Cruz uh, and then Christie. Now, how people interpret all that is the question. Traditionally, people usually talk about two or three tickets out of yeah. New Hampshire. I think this time there may be four or five tickets out of New Hampshire. Interesting. So what do you think New Hampshire voters want to see? Somebody made the point over the weekend that, look, Trump say whatever you know, comes into his head or his sort of you know, bombastic attitude will not play well for New Hampshire. Do you agree with that? I, I don't think it'll play well with the traditional New Hampshire voters. The question is, is how many non-players, non-traditional voters is he going to attract into the game and is he really going to get them to the polls? Uh, the voters here are beginning to, and I think it's going to begin to happen across the country uh, going into uh, South Carolina and then on the big March 1st, big day. Uh, I think voters are beginning to look for substance, positions on issues, capacity to perform. I think the entertainment part of the campaign is, is beginning to dwindle away. So do you think then that uh, he's going to be able to offer substance? No. Come on. Mm. <laughs> you got to have something to offer. Yeah. I thought Jeb Bush really took a stand in this most recent debate. He seems to be changing his, his persona a bit, uh, getting more to, to the substance of the issues and fighting back on, on yeah. Trump's sort of loser comments. Well, you know, uh, I think uh, a couple of folks have pointed out Jeb's problem at the beginning is that he was trying to be too polite. Uh, he's taken the gloves off. He's pounding back. He's pointing out that Trump has a history of being a loser. That's the, the phrase Jeb used again yesterday. Uh, and I think he's going right after Trump. And I think he's going to be pointing out uh, the way Trump loves to live off government, including things like eminent domain. He really did take those gloves off in the campaign. And I think you're going to see more of that going into South Carolina. I think you're going to see perhaps Governor Christie uh, being uh, not more aggressive, but continue uh, being aggressive. So this, this is going to be a hot and heavy campaign over the next month. How do you think some of the news headlines of the day play into all of this? I mean, we come into the office today. We have another major sell-off for the stock market. We've had the worst beginning of the stock market to the year of any year. We've got an economy that is debatable in terms of whether or not it, in, uh, it enters recession this year. Uh, North Korea, the list goes on in terms of hot spots around the world. How is that playing into voter decisions? Look, the voters in New Hampshire know that, that the, one of their responsibilities is to pick a candidate who can win, and then when he wins, is able to fix all those problems you have listed. Uh, this, this state is very aware of the fact that the last seven years have created the kind of, of results that you just went through. And, and this, it's that sense of responsibility that I think is keeping folks uh, in the volatile side until they actually walk in uh, to cast their vote. They're trying to cast a vote that makes a difference. They're trying to cast a vote that produces a good nominee, and they're trying to cast a vote that generates a good president. What are your expectations in terms of the field narrowing post-New Hampshire? When do you expect some folks to start dropping out in this field to get smaller, to give people a better opportunity to make that call? Uh, I think a couple of folks that should drop out will probably hang on through South Carolina. Mm. And, and, but I think after South Carolina, the demands of a 12 primary uh, uh, event on March 1st is just too demanding for those that don't have the resources. So, so it sounds to me like you think we'll, we may know the, the top two candidates, at least, for the nomination by March, mid-March. I think you'll know the top three. Yeah, top three by mid-March. All right, L 